All right, hey guys. So I'm going to be um, pretty much applying what you guys learned right now so far on the on the view styles and how to uh, extract images from Rhino. All right. So what we want is to export right a number of views. Right. And what views? Well, the ones that 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 I have here for you. Right. Top view, front view, right view, overall ground perspective ground perspective showing the entrance and then an aerial view right and at some point right your instructors will will start asking for this right um give me you know the, the, the elevation building elevations for your project uh give me a site plan or give me a couple of perspectives so that we can print and you guys can draw on them right? i know professor mireles and professor moreno uh we we all right ask you for this kind of things and this is how you'll know how to do that right now, right now, I'm using the names. If you notice, right, these names correspond the names of what are these called? What was that? Viewports, right? Thank you, right? These right now correspond the name of, view, of the viewports. Later on, right, architectural drawings, you'll see that they have different name. The top view might change into a site plan, for example. Um, Top views are not technically a floor plan, right? Because a floor plan is a cut. But from the top plan, you can start getting a floor plan, right? Later on with uh, with a few commands. Uh, your front and right views, anyone knows what those are called? Thank you, Lisa, right? There are elevations, right? There are building elevations. Again, right now we're just referencing them by what's the front and what's the back. But... Um, Buildings sometimes don't don't have that, right? I mean, they do have a front, right? But might not be the one that you think, right? So we don't reference them as the front elevation, right? Uh, a good example is right here, the GECU building, right? the one with the angles looking into the freeway, right? Technically, the entrance is not through towards the freeway, right? You see the building from the freeway, right? But the entrance, has anyone been inside of that building? I have a student who actually she works there and was telling me right but the entrance is around towards airway or not airway i think it's airway airway right then you make a turn that's the front of the building but for me maybe the front of the building is the freeway since i always see it from there right so then you get to actually the north south east and west elevations right which those are the technical name of these views but we'll get to that later the only thing though is that i want you guys i'm going to leave those so that you guys get familiar with these different views uh, that you have right here, all right? So the idea is that I capture this view, right? And I start pasting it in this document, very much as you would when you're putting a presentation on PowerPoint, right? On Greek architecture, and you start going through the images online, or maybe your, your scans and files, and you start dragging them onto your PowerPoint, right? So that you can give a presentation for your history class. That's very similar to what we'll be doing right here, okay? So we need to populate these uh, two sheets and an additional one that we'll be creating uh, with images from Rhino, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing. Let's see how we start. The first thing that we wanna do is to maximize the viewport that you're trying to export. Anyone remember how to do that? Yes. Double click your top view, all right? Let's start with there, the top, all right? So I double click on there, all right, on my top view, and I have done just that, right? I maximize the viewport, all right? Now, uh, you want to more or less have it center, and say right there, and you also wanna be mindful about these gaps right here, all right? This, this, this gaps, uh, saying, right, that for example, you don't have it like that. Because basically, you will be exporting everything that is within this empty space right there. For me right now, it's white. For you, it might be gray. And I'm going to show you how to change that uh, right now, actually. Right? But what I'm trying to say is that you try to zoom in as much as possible to the object. And even better, we can use right this icon. Right? Remember, you guys, from the first video and from the manual, zoom extends right because that right there let's say that i'm somewhere there right if i click on it right here right if i look at my screen boom, 
it zooms to everything that is selected and it also centers it for you right so we have set up the view port with the right um, um, objects in it now we need to export this before we do that right you see how we have this nice white background on the on the file itself right that's what we actually like to change right the background on rhino so that it blends in later on it becomes handy when we're trying to do a post-production or photo editing by changing our background to white and again if you look at my screen right the way that we do this is by typing options we get the options menu right perhaps you you have somewhere there you it sends you somewhere else right each of these little arrows right there that means that the menu expands so we want to go all the way to the bottom right um let me collapse this one's right here we're going to go all the way to the bottom to view right under view there's display modes right we want to expand that and what do we have underneath display modes if you look at my screen what do you what what the what what do you do you recognize something Yeah, right. That is the same settings or options that we get when we click on the different view styles, right? There, right? Or wireframe, shaded, rendered, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So again, I'll backtrack. We type options. We go to view. Right under view, there's a display mode, and the one that we want to select is shaded. Right? We don't need to expand the menu. Uh, we can just click on shaded. Right? Now, that's the left menu right there. Now, if you look to the right, right, there's a number of settings, right? Little by little, you'll get familiar with the number of these ones. But the one that we want in this case is this one right here. See, it says background, right? Mine already, I, I changed it already. Uh, for you guys, most likely default, right? It will be this right there, right? User Use applications settings, right? That's what you will have by default. You actually want to change that to be a solid color, right? Now, once you do that for you guys, right, uh, you'll get this box right here and it'll be gray, right? We click on that box and you actually can see that you can select any color that you want as your background, right? Wow, that kind of very, very bright, including white. All right, so I'll pause there a little bit to give you guys a, a, an, a, an opportunity to write this down, right? So type options, that's the command. It will take you to the options panel right here. On the left, you go to under view, you go to display modes. And then in this case, we're working with shaded. Now, you also can tell that you can start manipulating each of the different uh, styles, right? Whether it be in wireframe, render, etc. Right? You see that I'm now under render and you have that same setting. Right? I'm not going to go ahead and change it right now because we're not working with that. Um, but just, just, uh, just so you're aware, right? So, for example, for you guys that are working on your exercise number one, right? When you're exporting this and perhaps you actually want to export the rendered view because it keeps the color of the little blocks that you're using. And, and the background is not white. You can also go to solid color right there under rendered right here. Right? And then you see that the color is already select, set as white. So I'm not going to change anything. Now, in order to apply this, we click OK. All right. So what have we just done? The only thing that we did is change the background color of our drawing area uh, on our shaded view from gray to white all right now we are ready to export uh some images all right the way that we do this remember i'm going to hit right one more time and zoom extends just for fun right make sure that the view did not move or change right so i zoom extends um and here is the procedure for that we're going to go to the view menu Somewhere in the middle, almost in the middle, there's the option capture. It's kind of like you're a photographer, you're, you're going to capture something. And there are two options. The one that we're going to use right now is the first one, to clipboard. 
but I'll go ahead and explain and talk about both. So view capture, and then we select to clipboard. Okay. Now, once we um, once we're there, when, once we click there, right, we get uh, this menu. And this is a big improvement uh, from Rhino 5 to Rhino 6. Uh, if you're working on Rhino 5 for whatever reason, right, like Abe, that, oh, I, I downloaded 5 by, by mistake, right, by, by error, uh, you won't see this menu. So that's why it's important that you, you're working on Rhino 6. Um, here, right, make sure that whenever you get this, this uh, window on your screen, that for right now, all of these are unchecked. And you, by, by going through them, right, you can start telling what they do, right? Like the first one is the grid, right? If I click on it, and I'm just doing this to show you guys, right, what they are, right? I see the grid, right? And again, we, we don't want that. Uh, the world axis, right? Um, doesn't show right now, right here, but it's this little Y and X that you see in the bottom, right there in the bottom left. I think perhaps it's really tiny and you can see it. Etc. Etc. Um, another big thing to watch out for, um, and, and right now we're just going to leave it at resolution viewport. However, I do want to point out that this is the place that you can actually increase or decrease the quality of the image that you're going to export. Okay. Right now we're going to leave it as viewport, right? But later on you will want to make some of this bigger, right? bigger than your viewport right now. And this is the place to do that. There are some presettings already, or you can go ahead and create a custom. For right now, let's just go ahead and leave it at viewport, right? And we go ahead and click OK. And the the command run, right? If, if I look right here on my bar, right here on the top, command viewport to view capture to clipboard, the command did go in effect. It, it doesn't look at like nothing happened right but just like when you're copying let's say uh text from wikipedia and right? just highlight it control copy and then you go to your powerpoint and then you do what hmm? you paste it right we do the same thing right so there's a number of things i think the most uh the the most straightforward one would be to go to edit and paste right we are now on Illustrator, right? We're now on that template that I provided for you. Now, on Illustrator and other softwares as well, but here in Illustrator, you'll see that to the right and some of the actions that we have right here on the menus, these are the shortcuts right there. So we see that to paste is Control, B, S, and Victor, which is pretty standard for most softwares, right? So you can either go Edit, Paste, or you can use your keyboard Right, control B. Yeah, so far, so good. Now, the next thing, right, I'm gonna show you guys some basic navigation uh, tools here on Illustrator, right? Which is zooming and zoom out, panning, and let's see what else, scaling, but that's not really navigation. So pan. Panning, it's that little hand right there, right? So you see it kind of like, print, 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 right? so it's just right there, the board, and then I can move it around, right? We do that, right, by pressing the space bar, right? So if I press my space bar, you can see how my cursor changes. You guys see that? Right? My cursor changes to that little hand. I click and drag, and I move my drawing area. At the same time, if I if I hold the, the key Alt, my my cursor changes, and that's what allows me to scroll in, right? So I hold Alt A L T, scroll in and out, and that allows me to zoom in and out. All right. So panning, you hold Space Bar, you left click and drag, zoom in or out, you hold Alt scroll in and out and that's how i can you know for example right here zoom into into this place right there pre, uh, press the space bar so i can uh, move around 
the, the area right there and then hold, uh, hold back alt scroll out and move out okay now some basic uh, illustrator navigation kind of uh, similar to rhino but not quite right and, and rhino has more because it's three-dimensional right etc cetera, etc cetera. we have the dynamic view and, and, and so forth now what we want right it's to place this image on the first sheet right which is this one right here now on illustrator uh the same that in rhino we work heavily with layers right now to the perhaps my my screen looks different our board where are my layers right. um these are your layers right here let's see if i can dock them right there right uh there's a little icon right here layers Right. Um, just be just make sure that you're working on, on layer one. Right. So it's uh, it's the first one right there. And how do you know you're working on it? You just click on it once. Right. You highlight it. Right. And we collapse that. Right. And by collapsing, I mean pressing on this little arrow right there on any of these menus. Right. So that it it it, uh, it goes away. Right. So all of these ones we talk about them. Uh, some of them right uh, later okay so we have uh, changed the background color of our shaded model we have exported or copied the image into our clipboard we have pasted the image onto illustrator we have gone over basic navigation on illustrator panning and zooming let's talk about resizing images on illustrator all right as you move your cursor right around the, air, the navigation area, you'll see that certain things pop up, especially when you select something. In this case, I select the image. Now I place my cursor right on the edge and it changes, right? I'm not clicking yet. I'm just moving my cursor around to show you the different ways that this looks, right? Here, it looks like an arrow with some uh, little box to the right. Uh, I place it on the end uh, on the side that I get two arrows, right? I place it on the corner, I get either two arrows or that little bent arrow, right? That means different actions, right? The first one that we're going to be using is this little uh, uh, arrow on one of the corners. Now, we use this to resize the image. That means make it smaller so that it fits within the page. Now, if I place my cursor, right, and I click and drag, notice that I can do that, right? I can do that. Now, let me, before I do that, let me make a copy of this, all right? Uh, and let's say, okay, I need to make that image fit there. Okay, I do that, easy, right? Now, I ask you, is that the same drawing that as this, right? It's not, right? What's wrong with it? The dimensions, right? The dimension, there's a specific word for this. Starts with the P. All right. When you respect a ratio, the length to the width. Proximity. Huh? Proximity. Proximity. No, no. I think someone. Huh? Proportions. Right. That's key. Right. There's a proportion to this drawing right here. It looks like a square almost. Right. Here it now starts looking like a rectangle. I have change one of it if its axis is more than the other one that means that i stretched it right so we need to resize it but proportion it to the original okay and i'll show you guys how to do that so we do not want this okay it's really bad for your designs right because you're completely changing something right let's say that you show the first option to your client and he's like, I love it, right? That's great, blah, blah. And then you're putting a board, right? And then you show him this. And I was like, wait, what happened? Right? I mean, first one was proportional and now you're showing me a little gated one. So it changes the way that things look, right? So we definitely want to avoid that, right? So how do we do that? We, again, place our cursor on the corner or right? on either of the corners, right? But we hold the key shift, right? 
hold the key shift and then we click and drag inward in this case to make it smaller okay whenever you hold down shift on at least right now on illustrator right it, it, it locks the proportions all right so have have that in mind please keep that in mind all right so it has locked the proportion now i've done what i wanted right which was to make the image smaller okay and i can continue to resize it right i mean say i can bring it there and i can bring it there all right so shift shift click and drag should give you a, a proportionate resize of an image all right all right guys let's try one more right let's try one more uh i'll go back double click on my top so that i exit from that uh, maximize viewport right and again if you follow my screen right i'm going to repeat the operation what were those operations right i assume the extents right of that viewport um i go to view capture to clipboard right it gives me this preview right there i'll say okay i go back to illustrator paste it control v right and here we go all right i'll repeat that same operation hold down shift resize the image like that okay and i have that right there okay so far so good all right guys now who can tell me right now ben what's off right here okay it's not center true we like symmetry um what else they don't match, right? They don't match. I'm practically showing you a, two different buildings or two different objects, and they should match, right? If, um, again, the the front, right, should match the one of the, the ends right here, in this case, of the top view, right? They need to match, right? So how can we do this? Well, we need to resize this image right here so that they match all right now i'm starting to do that right i'm just eyeing this right like eh, mas o menos right like, eh, more or less all right well we have a little tool that can help us in order to um, get a little bit closer to these proportions right um and we do this with our guides now the the template that i have provided for you already has has guides right these lines that you see right there I, actually if you if i place my cursor on top of it it it, it says that guide right that means that that's what they are right and they help us align things right word processors particularly microsoft word they're already um you don't see them, but they're there. When you go into the rulers, right, you see like a grayed out zone right there, that it's the margin right there of the page, and then you can add like a header or a footer, right, et cetera. Um, those I have already set for you, but I wanna show you guys how to bring those out. Now, in order to do this, right, the first thing that you should bring out is your rulers, right? So I do this, right, if I, go, if I press Control R, as in ruler, right, Control R. And if you look at my screen, right, you'll see how this thing pops up. Right? I'm pressing it right now. Control R, Control R, Control R, Control R. Right? Those are the rulers. And they help us for a number of things. Of course, keep track of your units, keep track of your dimensions. But it also helps us uh, to bring out guides. Guides, 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 right? How do we bring out these guides? I place my cursor on top of the ruler i click and i drag if you just look at my cursor right there and follow it i'm dragging a line with me it looks uh, uh gray on with little dots 
if I release my cursor, it turns blue, and that's a guide. Right? Now, these guides act like objects in the sense that I can further move it. Right? I, I dropped it originally there. I place my cursor on top of it. My cursor tells me, hey, that's a guide. I click and I drag. Now, you can pick one. Right? Let's say I pick this elevation, right? and I'm going to place my first guide there which is at one of the ends of the image, right? If you want to be soup or even more precise about this, right? I can zoom in by holding Alt, right? And really getting in there and seeing, ah, okay. I can still move a little bit this guide to there. Okay. So I did an, an extra zoom. I'm super zoomed in. And I could even hold Alt and scroll out or there's a shortcut so that you can zoom into the entire page, right? And this is control zero. So I'm going to press control zero. I zoom to the extent of the entire page. And don't worry, I'm going to repeat that right here. So let's say I'm adjusting my guides, right? I'm getting in there. I like really, really zoom in there. And rather than doing again a super scroll out, which is holding out and scrolling out, I can just hold control, my control key my zero and it shows me the entire board that I'm working on right so I'm going to repeat that I'm gonna bring a second guide all right ready so I'm gonna go into the ruler right there click drag I'm gonna use uh, my elevation as my guide I'm gonna drop it right there for right now now I'm going to zoom in by holding alt right to get even closer right? Uh, and I'm going to place, let's say, my guide there, right? I'm centering it somewhere along the edge of this uh, elevation. I press what to zoom extent? Control zero, right? Control zero, right? So control zero. And there we go, right? Now, what do I need to do to this image on the top? So what were those guides for? To match the proportions, right? So I have already determined, right, and I'm going to zoom in by holding Alt, right, that my elevation, which is this joint right here, is going to derive, right, the size of this plan. So the way that I can do this, right, I can start stretching, right, my floor plan, my top view, I'm sorry, right, same way that I did before, so I place my cursor, hold on shift, scale it up a little bit, right, until this end meets there. All right, like that. Now, the left side is taken care of. Now, I can go on to the right. I'm holding the space bar to pan, right? I go to either corner, right, hold down shift, scale it up. And it's a bit of a game, right? You move something on the one side, and then you got to check that the other one did not change, right? And we do that. Now, in this case, I can even select the image and use my arrows, right, to move things around. If perhaps the size is correct, but that positioning is not, right? And I think I need to scale it just a tiny bit more, right, like that. I'm going to use my arrows to move it again. And I get that right there. Okay, good so far? All right, great. Now, these images are now matching and now they're, they're, um, they're proportionate to each other, right? So that's the front view of this drawing right there. Right? And this is what I, what I was talking about, um, one of the first sessions, right, about projecting lines, right? This staircase on, on top view is this little staircase right there and they should be matching right and again whenever you start working with elevations and how to construct this by hand right those are one of the key factors to keep in mind now we have our we have our um our drawings right that we have imported in here right now um it's two things it's arranging them so that the space they're they're laid out right so I select the image and I'm using my arrow to bring it down a little bit right, to give it some room to breathe, to move them apart. So I'm using my arrows 
Uh, if I hold shift and I press an arrow, you see that it moves at bigger increments. All right, let me repeat this. I first select the image, hold shift, press an arrow. All right, and it moves a larger increment. Right. No, no, just uh, select the image, shift, and arrow. All right, guys. So we have our images. Now, how about we name our images, right? Let's give them a name. And, and this is a very standard as well, right? To title all your drawings and all your images, right? Um, what's the name of this image? Top view, this one right here, front view. Okay, have that in mind. So we want to add some text boxes right here, right? We want to add that. So I want to show you guys how to copy um, here. Other than, of course, I, I want to add some text. So I'm going to borrow, right, some of the text boxes that are here, particularly this one right here, right? I'm going to borrow this text box so that I can copy it and add a title to these drawings, okay? So a way that I can do this is by going to select the object first, which is the image, edit, copy, and again, nothing happens because I need to paste it, right? Edit, paste. Right. So this happened right here. Right. There's the text. Right. But what's happening? It's behind the layer. Right. Abraham. Thank you. Right. Or behind that drawing. Right. So on on for, on, for, on the PowerPoint. Right. I think there's also this option. Right. Where you can send objects front and back. We also have that here. Right. So in this case, I either need to send the image to the to the back or the text to the front. Right. So let's select the image. Right. I'm going to select the image. I'm going to right click on it. And there's these options right here. Arrange. And one of them right, is sent to back. Now didn't really work right and I'll explain why right because additionally here in Illustrator we have what's called layers right which I just expanded the menu right here and layers override the order of things and layers again are on this menu right here to the right and the order of layers it's from bottom to top so the layer that it's all the way to the bottom that's the layer that is behind all the layers on top of that first layer are on top of it, literally, on the software, right? So what's happening is that if I click on the image, it tells me that it's on layer number one, right? And how do I know that? Because I click on it. Again, if you look at my screen, right? I click on it, and this blue thing appears, right? If I click on the text, let's see on what layer it is. It's on the layer underneath it, right? So how do we fix this, right? And again, anything that you click on, right, it tells you what layer is on right here on this menu, right? How do we change that? Well, I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to drag it, right? Not inside of that layer, but in between that other layer, right? And if you look at my screen, right, watch, watch, watch. I'm going to release and there appears the text. Right there, it appears. Okay, so again, like I said, a little bit of introduction to write uh, to Illustrator uh, on the go, right? On the go, on this. Now we see that the text is there. Right? It is. It is there, um, visible. Okay, I'm going to collapse my layers uh, panel one more time. Now, I want to edit this text. Right, and here are the here are the 
I think the only characteristic of this. Um, we need to title it, right? So what was the name again? Front view. Copy. All right. Let me let me. Um, I'll continue on this one, and then uh, maybe just. Uh, uh, look at my screen right there so that we don't fall behind and then I'll come back and we'll try it right now on the lap Okay, mm -hmm. you'll try and I'll and I'll help you there on the lap right there, right? So I Have the text right there in order to edit text. Right? I have the copy right there. I can double click on it And notice that my cursor changes Right so I can select the text And I'm going to change its size up here. Right? So it's right now at a 12. I'm going to change this to a 10. So I'm going to backspace, put a zero in there, press enter, right? And if you look at the text right here, it got much smaller. Okay? How do I exit out of this? I press escape. Okay, I'm gonna do this again to name the, the drawing on top of it. So don't worry, right? So give you guys a chance to uh, take some more notes on this. Okay, ready? So I'm going to borrow the same text. I could use this one right here, but I'll, I'll borrow this one that is a larger font so that we can go over how to change the size again, right? So I select the text, edit, copy, edit, paste. It brings the text right there. Uh, by default, you want to align your text to your drawing. And I mean this end, right, to this other end. I am going to double click on it to edit the text. And I'll label this as Christian, all right. What's the name of that drawing? All right, copy it. Okay, all right. So I X. Oh, let's change the size, right? So again, I can either double click on it or highlight it. All right. Change the text up here. Click there. Right, delete the two, bring the zero, enter, press escape, and I exit. Right, good job. Right, so how do I zoom out, zoom out to the extents? Shift, uh, what? Shift. <laughs> control zero, right? Control zero. And, and again, when I ask you this question, right? So it's on your notes, right? You have this, right? You have this. Remember, you you have this information. All right, guys. So we have brought in our first two images onto um, the software. Now, from there, right, there's a couple of things that we need to take care of, right? Because this is a template. And this is a template for um, this file right here. Now, on the cover sheet, right? I'm going to zoom in. Right? right? Um, you'll see that Spring, for example, will change that. So again, double click on that, right? And I type all, right, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we, um, we don't need to change the rest because it's the same lap that you guys are doing, which is lap number one. Uh, make sure that you change the, the student name, right? So I'm gonna double click there, right? Right there. Now, uh, today is not a Tuesday. Right, it's a Thursday. Right, this is not Jan uh, February. It's, uh, it's September, and this is the sixth. Now we are right. We're not AM. We are PM, and we are one PM. All right, press escape, and I exit. Control zero and I extend. Right? So that's how we add text to to this um, um, documents. All right. 
Good. So remember, you'll have a chance to edit this, right? To change all of these, right? Let's continue with the uh, demonstration right here. Right? But I also want to show you guys how to copy without having to go to the edit, copy, edit, paste menu. Right? On Illustrator, if you select any object, you hold that Alt key, right? Notice that my cursor changes, right? Make a note of that. Cursor must change, right? I select the object, I click and drag, release my mouse, release my keyboard. I have made a copy of something, all right? I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to delete that. So I select an object. I'm going to even copy an image. Select the object, press the Alt key, your cursor changes. I, I, I'm holding the Alt key still, right? I'm still holding it. Select the object, click and drag, release the mouse, release Alt key. The order matters, okay? First release the mouse and then release, or your, your mouse button and then release the Alt key. If you do it the other way around, uh, the copy won't work and you actually will do a movement yeah, and you'll see it you'll see it uh, takes a little bit you're like oh man I, I didn't um, anything anything text images and artboards which is what we're, what we're gonna use it for in a minute all right you guys are doing great now I want to bring in one more image to this side right here because I want to show you something that we have uh, talked about or we talked, uh, we talk, touched on, right? I'm going to bring in the right side, okay? So follow me, follow me real, real quick, right? So I'll go to front, go back to right, uh, go to view, capture to clipboard, all right? Uh, I'm actually going to escape first, right? I'm going to center it to some extent right there. There we go. View, capture clipboard okay go to illustrator right paste it bring it right there and done right right now right okay well i mean i pasted it right but what's next the shift to re size right resize okay right. now how do i do that how do i do that how do i make this one now match these two with the guides right with the guides now there's two ways that i could do this right i could either bring this image over here momentarily right and do my thing over here right hold shift and resize it and then bring it back or I can, since I'm done with these guides right here, I can, right, move them and bring that right there. And I see that it's a little bit off. All right. Or even better, all right, I can select the guides and I can make a copy of them, right? So again, I press the Alt key place my cursor on top of the guides, click and drag, release my cursor, release my Alt key, and now I have guides on both pages. But this is important because again, those guides have the same width, right? They, they remain the same size so that all your, or your, at least your orthographic drawings match, right? The elevations are not going to match. I mean, the, the perspectives are not going to match because they are perspectives. But at least your top, front, and right should be matching, as well as left, bottom, and back sides, right? Because, again, technically all around and top, all of those views should match among themselves, right? That's, that's important. So I copied my guides right there. I'm going to resize this image real quick, right? So I'm going to place one right there so that it touches there i'm going to hold shift resize too much right bring it up a little bit uh, maybe it's done i'm just going to hold shift use my arrows to move not too big hold shift scale down 
move this right? a tiny bit more there we go and use my arrows to place it there from there the rest is just the same right i can hold on select the text hold alt key click and drag right and make a copy there release my my mouse first now release my keyboard Right. So, so we're we're almost almost there. All right. All right, guys. We're almost there. Right. Now the last part of this then it's to generate a new Illustrator file and a new PDF file. You might be like, wait, a new Illustrator? Yes, right? Because if we um, if we remember, right, Dylan, right? What file are we working on under? What file are we working under, right? What file is this? What I'm working on right now. Uh huh. No, do you remember where where, where did I get it from? Uh huh. Right, and what was the name of it? template right it's a template meaning that you will be referencing this there for later right so if i go right now into file save right i'm going to overwrite the original which is the template right and we don't want to do that right this actually turns into a new file right anyone knows how do we do that thank you dylan right file save as right because yes we have done changes to the template yes we want those changes but we also want to keep that template untouched all right so you'll see right here under my downloads i have the template right um we can actually delete this all right and what you will actually be submitting this is just for class but the one that you will be submitting right is your exercise one Actually, it's a lap one. Uh, the, the manual calls it exercise one. We're calling it lap one. Right? This is your lap number one. So we have, we're doing a save as, right? And I'll go uh, three things whenever you're saving any file in any software, right? Name, location, and format. Name, location, and format. name of course we just took care of it right because if i leave the same name i'm going to get a message right warning there's already a file name that way do you want to overwrite it and you're like whoa, whoa whoa wait actually no right um we changed the name right location right where am i storing this oh man not the desktop right let me save it on my thumb drive right and last is the format in this case remember we are doing an illustrator file right so we leave it there but always double check and ask yourself okay what do i need illustrator or pdf All right so i'm going to go ahead and click save and that's um that this window appears for right now uh, we can just click okay All right this window appears nothing about it right just hit okay now notice that on rhino our names were on the top bar right here on illustrator the name of the file is right here on the tabs right? this little tabs right there right so we see that that uh, the name and the format right lap one dot ai that's sometimes i'll ask i want you guys to upload your ai file i want you guys to upload a pdf that's what i mean right an ai file is an adobe illustrator file versus a pdf file right now we did the save as for an illustrator file now we'll do a save as so that you can two things upload this and print this all right how do we do this we go to file save as one more time now again name location and format the name remains the same the location 
again, your drive or your laptop or your desktop. Now the type is what div changes, which is the format, right? Now this changes to a PDF. And you see uh, my icons right here change because now this, the computer is showing me the PDF files. And you, you can have an Illustrator and PDF file with the same name. They won't be overwritten because they're different file formats. Right? So, ready? I go ahead and say, click Save, and I'm going to get another window. All right, so I click Save. All right, so now this is the Safe Adobe PDF uh, window. All right. Uh, for right now, let's just make sure that all of them are, are checked. All right. And we go ahead and click Save a, Save PDF. The bottom, click there. And since we had uh, to show us a preview when it's done, that's what it'll do. All right. And you get this. All right. Now, as you see from our calendar right or, or tasks right um, you're actually for your lap one you're going to do an upload which is a PDF upload on on blackboard and I have it right there which is due Friday before midnight now you also need a print right physical print that you're gonna bring with you for next class right? and that's a color print okay so this file right now is digital. It's stored in your local files. You can go to Blackboard, look, uh, look up the assignment, and upload. Right? Upload this so that I can see it on Blackboard. Now, additionally, you should store this on your thumb drive so that you can take it to print. Right? And again, I suggest that you work with the printing center right here at school, but perhaps you might have a, a printer at home or at, at, at uh, wherever you work or a family member at their office. Right, um, whichever one you prefer. Right now, I have created the PDF. I can close this. Um, I have more than one tab open, so I'll close all tabs right there. And I think uh, this is going to ask me one more time to save. Nope. And I have done that. Yes. No? Oh, I thought there was a question. Right. And that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, right, that's how we have exported right jpeg uh, jpeg image files i uh, view capture to clipboard from <laughs> rhino let's uh, let's see it right into uh pd into adobe illustrator so that we can create a pdf okay now we're going to let, work on this here in class right first with the document that i have provided for you then the idea is that you repeat the same steps for your lab which is the building that you're doing with the little building blocks that the training manual provided for you. All right. Any questions before we break into the lab that perhaps uh, we can discuss right here on the projector? Or... The color, right? So go over that real quick again. So options, type it, press enter. Right? Uh, remember that we want to go to, uh, you're going to get this big old left menu right there. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. All right, view. You want to expand that under shaded, which is the one that we're using right now, or render, which is the one that you might want to use for your project, right? Whichever one, right? You go, you select it first, right? In this case, shaded or render, right? You want to select shaded. We go onto the options to the right, and one of the first ones, right? Viewport settings, it's background color. By default, it will be set to use application settings. We change it to solid color. This bar appears, this little block right there. Remember that you click on it and you can apply any background color that you wish, which can start giving you some really uh, cool um, graphics. Right? Like, like that, for example, can be kind of interesting, especially because of the grid pops up um, almost white. Right? So, But I'm going to change that back to white and okay good question Eve. anything else 
right? So this is where we're gonna test right now. We'll go over your notes right there, but this is the time that, oh, I got lost right here, right there. Raise your hand and I'll stop by. What's going on, right? All right, well, oh no. Was it me? Yeah. All right, guys, let me stop this. So one more thing, guys, right? Let me borrow your attention real, real quick, right? Pause, pause where, where you're at. Uh, Jesus right now asked me, right? And, and um, that's the reason that I mentioned about copying because we need to create one more thing, which is one more board, right? Because you have six images, six images, and you need three sheets, right? Because it's two, two, uh, two um, images per sheet, right? So we actually do that. And again, I'll show you guys how, again, for your notes, right? So you can actually write this down. Um, we do that under document setup. Right. Document setup. If you don't have this menu right here, um, there's this option on top. All right. Um, mine is a little bit different. I think the, you guys are working actually on a newer version, but you guys should have one that's called Essentials Classic. Right. And it will bring uh, these tools right there and some of these ones right here if you don't have them. Right? Why? Because we want to go to document setup. Right? We click there. So first thing, document setup. And again, this is how to create a new board. Right? How to add a new board. Right? Document setup. Then we want to go to edit artboards all right I'm gonna pan so that I can give myself some room right here to the right and you guys remember what key do I hold to make a copy of something alt, alt right hey, thank you so I, re I is the same deal right so but you gotta be really careful here, right? Because if you click and drag or you move stuff around, you may create boards without noticing or realizing, right? So again, document setup, edit our boards. Now I place my cursor right inside of the board of a board. I hold Alt, changes my cursor. I click and I drag out. Now notice as I move my cursor, right? It gives me that pink line. And that's a little guy that's telling me like, hey, these are aligned. If I get out of it, right, notice that they're not aligned anymore. Right? But if I move back again, it, it locks. And you'll see that it kind of like if it was like a metal and a magnet, kind of like snaps it, it snaps to it. Right? I release my cursor first, and then I release my alt key. And before you do anything else, if you're done with the copies of artboards, we press escape. Right? And we exit out of the uh, document setup, edit, edit our board um, option. Right? And notice that it copies with it everything inside of that board. Right? So I had that image, that text, that text right there, that text on the bottom. It copied everything there, which is helpful. Right? I mean, in this case, for example, I can get rid of the image. Right? And remember, these last three images right, are going to be for your lab are going to be the overall ground perspective, a ground perspective which primarily shows the entrance of your um, little study model or your little project rather, and then an aerial view. And perhaps we should talk about what those are, right? Ground perspective. Now, overall ground perspective, right? That's the official. Overall ground perspective. What does that mean? Right? Overall, you're showing the entire design of it from the ground. Pretty much how we experience the city. Right? You're walking on the sidewalk, you see a building either across the street or on a distance, right? But you are grounded, right? So what does that mean? That I go into my perspective view and I place my view somewhere, you know, that again, that's not the ground. Right? If you look at my screen, that's not the ground right there. But this is getting more like the ground, right? From your manual, there's a setting right there. If you hold control and you right click, zoom in, you get what's called the dynamic zoom. 
right? And I shift and pan, and I get it kind of like that. Like if you were taking a photograph of something beautiful, right? In this case, it's just a building, or if you're taking a selfie or whatnot, right? I mean, you're really good, you know, how to take photographs, right? What's a good angle for, for your face or whatnot. Uh, the same with your projects, right? You try to find some of the best angles for it, right? Showcase your work. So that's a overall ground perspective. Now, in your case, maybe your building is really tall, right? So you'll have more space, right? And you maybe you want to zoom out there, right? But still somewhere from the ground. And this is helping us train navigating on our model, right? And how to position ourselves in this virtual world, okay? Now, there's another one, right? The next one says uh, ground perspective showing the entrance. Now, that's again a ground. And again, we want to try to, again, zoom in as, as much as necessary. Now, particularly, we're showing what? Christian, the entrance, right? So that's the entrance right there, and I can capture that other view. Right? I'm not capturing them right now, but they're already there. Right? I mean, you could go to view, capture, clipboard. Now the last one, right? It's a, an aerial aerial view, right? A aerial view, and it should also say overall a aerial view. That means that I come. Out, now I am flying. I'm somewhere up above, right? And as long as I'm uh, somewhere flying, and that I have for the most part of the project in its entirety, that would be the aerial overall aerial view. Okay. So good question, Jesus. Thank you for bringing that up. Right. You are going to need to create an additional board, all right? So that you can uh, finish adding those, right? The perspective from the ground, uh, the perspectives showing the entrance and the overall area. Remember that you are going to name each of these views, and those names are the ones that I have provided for you. Right? Overall ground perspective, ground perspective showing the entrance, and an aerial view. Right? And that's what you use right here to name these views. Anything else, perhaps, then? Refresher. All right. All right.